Hey there, true believers. Uh, right now we're doing a, a podcast on the Merc with the Mouth Deadpool. With me tonight is Reggie from Reggie's Take. Howdy. How's it going, Reggie? Um, well, you know, I got a nice set of smooth ones down under, so I'm good. There you go. <laughs> Just like Mr. Pulverine. <laughs> um, well, um, first off, I do want to apologize. My throat's a little raspy. Uh, last night I was trying to sing Gimme Shelter all night, but I was singing the uh, Mary Clayton uh, verse, singing along with her. So there you go. <laughs> shake away. <laughs> and the shake away, yes. Do you know Mary Clayton had a, uh, the, the singer on uh, the female singer on Gimme Shelter had a, um, after she sang that, she had a miscarriage. Really? Isn't that messed up? Huh. Like she sang so hard that she had a miscarriage. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, just we're like, starting this podcast off dark. Well, it's just like, just like the, uh, and this is way off subject, but this is like uh, the uh, ep- famous episode of Lucy. We're on her, on her show. Mm-hmm. And when they did the, did the show, she gave way, get, supposed to give birth to her her son on the show yeah and then later that night she actually did give birth in real life yeah that's right so that was kind of a little hey odd. You, you you brought it back from the dark yeah good job, <laughs> good job. S- sad story followed by happy story <laughs> so um yeah we're gonna talk a little bit about deadpool right now i got a comic i went to the comic book store because i don't own any deadpool comics but i got it's one of the newest ones it's Deadpool Volume Four, Number Twenty Five. Um, the cover is really funny. It's Deadpool wearing a top hat, um, and with a lot of confetti, and it says, ta- "I think tacos are number one." <laughs> there you go. Which tacos is he talking about? Mmm, <laughs> that's a good point. Maybe some fish tacos. Mmm. So, um, yeah, Deadpool. There was this movie out called Deadpool. It was the, about um, a pool that, that starred, died. That starred Green Lantern. I mean, Ryan Reynolds, That's right? That's right. It did. <laughs> it did. You know, uh, we forgot to mention, and by the way, um, uh, just before this, we did a uh, podcast on Reggie's show um, about the movie itself. We also talked about the upcoming uh, Batman versus Superman movie, uh, which looks actually really good um it looks a lot this latest trailer actually got me excited for it so but uh so we talked a little bit about deadpool who is a really weird character um he's basically a joke character although that's not really how he started out he was created by rob liefeld the same guy who created uh, cable and the same guy who drew that god awful picture of Captain America that floats around the uh, that floats around the internet. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know there was a god awful drawing of uh, Captain America. Well, let me show you real quick. Don't worry, we'll edit all this out. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever look up Rob Liefeld, you usually find like. Uh, 50 worst, uh, <laughs> like, top 50 worst Rob Liefeld drawings or whatever. <laughs> like, he's he really has become kind of a joke. The thing about uh, Rob Liefeld is, oh, and here it is. I found it for you. Let me enlarge the image. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right? Damn. I uh, If I remember, that, I'll be sure to you know, interlude this in, not, into not, the video. Not to make this podcast even more you know wrong than it, what it started out as, but when I first looked at this, I thought initially he drew, drew Captain America with breasts. Yeah, but they're breasts yeah. that are facing the wrong way. <laughs> and he turned that in and said, I'm done. <laughs> like, wow. Give me my money. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's see. Chris <laughs> Evans pulled this version of Captain America. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, actually, it's funny. A friend of mine um, sent me a photoshopped version of. Uh, you'll have to. Of, you, you'll have to put that picture up briefly when you. Uh, oh, post, I will. I will. post your. Uh, a friend of mine uh, sent me a picture of uh, Chris Evans photoshopped to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. But um, so. Rob Liefeld, he was like 18 or 19 when he started Marvel. And, you know, like, this was back in the early 90s. How does um, how does someone at age 18 or 19 end up working for something like you know, Marvel? I don't know. Luck? 
so, know somebody, blew somebody? I mean, probably all three. <laughs> um, you know, like I mean, because you hear he these, was... you mean you hear these people, movies, television, comics, whatever you want to think, and it's like, well, how the hell did that guy get so lucky to 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 jump into that type of a situation? Well, I know. Yeah, I, I mean, either his artistic skills were good, or someone just liked what he had. Or, you know what? Um, for an eighteen-year-old kid. He was really good. Like everyone likes to, everyone likes to uh, make fun of him nowadays. But the fact is, he was really good when he was eighteen, and he was drawing like some seriously crazy stuff. That yeah, it doesn't look that great now. But imagine in the nineties being a kid and just yeah. seeing like the most balls out, testosterone fueled, crazy stuff uh-huh. that was never done before. I mean, again, it. It would never happen again. That that would never be accepted again. But there was like that period of time where it hadn't been done before, and people I, were excited about. I mean, because when I was in high school in the late eighties, I mean, I knew some kids that I weren't necessarily friends with, but I knew of them because I was in class with them. No, yeah. and they could draw like I had never seen before. Yeah. I mean, like professional artists. And yeah, I don't think those guys are doing anything comic wise or anything like that. But you know, with that type of skill, I. I, I I, I try and draw a stick lot. figure. I mean, I, I try and draw the best I can do is a stick figure, and my stick figures don't even look like stick figures. So, I mean, that's how bad of a drawer I am, and I'm just amazed at some of these people who can just sit down there and just start doodling, and next thing you know, they've got this picture that would, you know, you would think was professionally done. It's just amazing how some people are born with that kind of talent, and, and, and others, it just skips. Well, I think uh, with... Rob Liefeld, um, yeah, and you're absolutely right. Um, it, it's just like you know, some people are, are, are you know are, are born to gab, and others you know can't put out a coherent sentence. See, I, I one of the things that Liefeld did when he was attending junior college was, um, I guess, like at all these, he'd go to all these. Um, conventions and uh-huh. send work to like like artists that are in the industry so that like he just kept doing it and kept doing it for a and year someone and that's still like a, a huge amount of luck for someone at that age but s- s- someone must have liked what he did and mm-hmm. just gave him the chance and said here you know we'll give you the shot you know and you know i mean it it's easy to make i i you know i mean and a, a lot of it with him is i think that uh I think that since he got so big, and he was like rock star level, um, him and Jim Lee and some of the other guys at Marvel, they were like, they were like huge. This is like the first time that, you know, comics were huge at this period. And this is the first time that the artists were taking front and center. Uh And they, you know, I mean, everybody loved Jack Kirby and, Steve Ditko, but this is the first time where, like, the artists were, like, like, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it, it was a, it was a different, it was definitely marketed differently. Like, to the point where uh, Spike Lee, there's a famous uh, commercial, which I actually remember in the 90s, directed by Spike Lee, which I didn't know that back then. But <laughs> Spike Lee um, does a commercial where he, he interviews Rob Liefeld and has him draw and uh-huh. talk about art. And, and, you know, the whole thing was about getting kids excited about art and stuff. But, um, you know, I think the problem with Liefeld is that he got so um, so famous so young that I don't think that – that I think it did actually kind of stunt him a little bit. I don't think that he ever actually got out of – like I don't think he actually evolved as an artist after that. Like he he still kind of draws like an eighteen year old or mm-hmm. like a twenty year old would. But you know, a lot of people like to rip on him. But the fact is, it's like, do you like Deadpool? Then quit ripping on him. You know, I mean, right. like you know, like I I I don't know. Like I mean, I'm not a fan of his art, but I'm a fan of the idea of him. So there you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, Deadpool was created by Mr. Liefeld and uh, uh, some writer no one cares about. (laughs) Um, I'm not even going to say his name because, again, no one cares. No, I'll say his name. The writer was uh, Fabian Nicieza. (laughs) 
But uh, that was for um, <coughs> that was for New Mutants number ninety eight. The New Mutants were a spinoff of X Men, started by Chris Claremont back in the. Uh, How many spinoffs of, of the X Men? Oh, there been? two. I I couldn't tell you. There's yeah, yeah Uncanny X Men. Uh, 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 there's X Men, then there's New Mutants, um, X Factor. Excalibur, the British version. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making that up. Do they have um, high tea at four o'clock? I guess. Okay. I, I don't know. There's a there's a bunch. There's a bunch, but New Mutants is one of them. Um, and the idea of New Mutants was um, to focus more on the kids, like because Chris Cl- Claremont, when he took over X Men, you know, he made you know he got rid of the you know, it was no longer a school when he was doing it. It was like, you know, like Storm and Wolverine and all these others. But he didn't want to bring back the school X Men a- aspect, and that's what New Mutants was. They were teenagers. Um, <coughs> but, um, <clears throat> so there you go with that. They were teenagers, and, and usually they fought Emma Frost or something like that. And, um, so that's where Deadpool comes in. Deadpool was originally a villain, and Deadpool is basically a ripoff of the Teen Titans villain, Deathstroke. Even Deathstroke's look and everything. Okay, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, so aside from the fact that he was, um, you know, Deathstroke, Deadpool, Deathstroke has... Blue and orange costume. Deadpool has red and black, but almost identical. They're both mercenaries. Even the name. Deathstroke's real name was Slade Wilson. (laughs) So there you go. Now, isn't Deathstroke a a DC? Yes, yes. He's uh, one of the Teen Titans. Are you familiar with the Teen Titans at all? A little bit. Not not as much as I probably... Could be or should be. They recently, like within the past ten years, gained a lot of popularity due to. I know there's the an anim- a- animated series. It's and... not. It's not great. Um, it, it always looked more for kids to me than it it's did anything. Way it, it's for kids. It's it's not great, but um, they the Teen Titans they'd been around for a while, but it was mostly like the sidekick characters, mm-hmm. like goof on their goofy adventures, and then. In the 80s, they decided to, um, they kind of were in competition with X-Men. So they decided to uh, add some new characters like uh, Starfire and Raven and Cyborg. And that's when they also added Deathstroke as a villain. But uh, let's see. Now, the Deadpool create kind of create their own universe or has has he always kind of tried to live in the x-men universe no he's he's uh well like with marvel there's no x-men are part of the right same universe as everyone else deadpool really is his own like while he started off in the x-men let's call it a circle in the x-men circle he's really gone on to his own thing okay uh he appears in iron man spider-man he, he appears with all of them um they call him the merc with the mouth because he doesn't shut up <laughs> I, I think that was kind of something of the appeal of the uh of the uh of the movie i think it's really interesting how like he started off as a legitimate villain but like as time went on they just realized more and more kind of how dumb he was so like <laughs> He's really become like this anti-hero comedy character who breaks the fourth wall. He's, you know how in the movie he he was aware that he was in a movie. Uh-huh. Well, in the comics, he's aware that he's in a, a comic. comic. It's the exact same thing. He speaks in gold speech bubbles. I don't know if you noticed yeah, that. Yeah, and I was flipping like, through that one. Yeah, everything is in gold. His are in gold. Everyone else's are white. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but yeah, his speech bubbles. Uh, and, and, and I find are it funny. Gold. I find it funny. You know, he's taking on crossbones, and crossbones is is in his underwear. That yeah. was that was that was yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's he's really an interesting character. Uh, Rob Liefeld said that 
with Deadpool and Cable. He wanted them to be like his Spider Man and Wolverine, essentially. Really? Huh. But he's really he really is kind of an interesting character. I'm I'm not entirely sure when he started becoming funny. Oh, on the movie, do you remember Bob? When he's killing all those mercenaries and one of them is like an old friend of his, he's like, Bob, hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, 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 and yeah. I don't yeah. think he kills Bob, but, well, Bob is a character. I didn't know this until I read about it. Bob is a character in the comics. His name is Hydra Bob, and he's uh, always a, he's a, he's one of the Hydra, uh, um, um, foot soldiers or whatever. And he's all he is. He's always dressed in Hydra u- uniform, but his name is Bob. Um, <laughs> they couldn't put the Hydra part in Deadpool, but you know if they call him Bob, it's whatever. You know that's uh-huh. not really infringing on anything. So now something we didn't address in, in in my podcast that I maybe we probably should have or or, or, or could have, uh, being that the fact that Deadpool was a hard R. It was probably best that Fox did the movie instead of Disney slash Marvel because if it, I don't know if Disney would have let Marvel go a hard R on Deadpool, being just how they are. You know, yeah, probably not. Although I would, I still think that Iron Man three should have gotten an R rating. So, I, mean, I mean, just because you know how it how, would how, have how been a soft R, of I course, mean, but you know, knowing how Disney is, yeah, because if Disney would have done it. They would have folded him basically into their cinematic universe, and I think they would have softened him up quite a bit. They probably would have, yeah. And I don't think it would have worked as well. Yeah, they De- probably would have. De- De- Deadpool would have become one of those characters if it had been in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, kind of like Black Widow. Never would have got his full, no, full movie, but would have been there enough to kind of, no, give you a little bit of what he could be, but never the full potential. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think so. I think, so, I th- so I think Fox having. I think it, Fox was just scummy enough that like it works to. Well, and I have think this scummy character in there, and the fact that it only cost him fifty eight million to make the movie. Yeah. And anything over a hundred million and pr- whatever was gonna, they would probably take it as a success. Yeah. And after their epic failure last year with Fantastic Four, they figured what the hell. Yeah. I mean, you had to do something to kind of regain your reputation back. I mean, because. Uh, wasn't Deadpool their first uh, superhero movie since Fantastic Four? Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, they needed something to redeem themselves. Yeah. And obviously, they found that because I don't think Fantastic Four is going to be coming back anytime soon. No, I really hope I, Marvel gets them. I, I, Fantastic Four, as we I think we talked before, just needs to sit on the shelf for quite a while. Probably. E- either a until Mar- <laughs> until Disney gets it, or until Fox can actually do it right, which I don't know if they can. I mean, they well, have, this pr- is their third shot. Yeah, and they've never really they, gotten it right. I mean, they've they've done this, and I, I'm counting the last two as shot two. Like, I'm going back to the Ro- Roger, uh, to the shit. I forget his name, but yeah, I know um, I know where you're going with it. Like, yeah. like the, they've tried this three times now, and and, and it's sad to say is the the one where uh, uh, with Jessica Alba, yeah, right? Those or, are the best, bet, ones. Oh, the better ones, yeah. Like, and they weren't good. Like the first one is watchable, the first in like one's a okay. boring kind of way. The, the first one's okay, but second one is pretty bad though. I, I, second one could have been a lot better. But like, yeah, like it's amazing how those are the good, good Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four movies. movies now. Yeah, like this thing was a piece of garbage. And I, I that also brings up, you know, it, it only cost them fifty eight million to make a superhero movie. It, it kind of c- comes into question. Do the studios need to be putting out two hundred million dollars to make a good superhero movie now? No, that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, because if you look at all they did with Deadpool, I mean, yeah, it had some CGI effects in there, obviously, but they pulled it off without having to do a lot of green screen. And now, and in some instances, it was a smaller scale story, story right? But yeah, it was still very. It was still a really good superhero movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, it's no worse than what you would have gotten, if I say, with Batman and it well, been with, with Batman with, and with Batman with, and with, with with Tim Burton's yeah. Batman. So, or even or even Spider Man. Those yeah. have always been small scale stories. Yeah. So and like I mean, the special as much as I love the first Spider Man, the special effects are terrible. Yeah, they were terrible then. 
Spider-Man 2 actually had pretty good special effects for its time. Spider-Man, the Spider-Man's got better with the special effects. It's just problem is the time you got to the third one, the storyline just wasn't that great. Yeah. They tried to do too much in that third one. Yeah, they did. Which we've discussed before. <laughs> many, many times. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that one is my episode one. <laughs> I don't even think it's the worst movie in the world. It's just like, eh, no. it could have been better. Yeah. I mean, you didn't need, as, as we discussed before, the, the, the main villain should have been Harry. Yeah. It really should have been. Yeah, it should have been. Sandman yeah. is a cool visual effect on the side. E no e Venom. You could have lost either. In my opinion, you could have either lost Sandman or Venom, and, and it has still been fine. I, th I think lose Venom. Save him for... My thought was always, save him for the surprise fourth one. Like, if, yeah. if they decide to do a fourth, fourth one, one, that would have been okay. That. Yeah, That would have made perfect sense. Or hell, like the fact that they... Uh, God, I can't believe I'm talking about this. The <laughs> fact that they, uh, like, uh, Dr. Connors was in the second the one. The second one. Yeah. And, but he never becomes Lizard. Well, and some people thought, oh, well, this is their way of possibly bringing him, you know, to be the Lizard in That's future, what I thought, future yeah. movies, but they never did anything yeah. with it. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, Deadpool, Deadpool. Yes, Deadpool speaks in uh, Golden Speech Bubbles. Let's see. Let me see if I can find a really weird. I want to look at this first page right here. And if you look at it, he's got this super cute version of him. They uh -huh. call it super deformed. It's super <laughs> deformed. It looks like a, uh, almost like a bobblehead type yeah, of thing. Yeah, bobblehead looking character. Yeah. And he says, hey, everyone. Hey, everybody. Look my way. It's Deadpool shouting at you. The the re the reiterating del deliberate <laughs> so here's where we stand this goofball agent gorman of shield ripped me off for a load of money and put a price on my head turns out he was ripping off shield too and working for terrorist group ultimatum <laughs> i took awesome. ultimatum down a barroom iq test worth of pegs but Gorman got away, but you'll, but you'll kill him in good time next time, right? Me, see, he's like talking to himself, right? Meanwhile, I've been working on getting Agent Preston out of my head and into a robot LMD body. But man, this is really confusing. But what I don't know yet is that it worked. Preston is in her own woman. Preston is her own woman again, able to hug her family with non-cancerous arms. No way. I would never leave I would never leave you now. Get killing. Alright. All I know is I'm still hearing her in my head. And now Crossbones, who is who I humiliated when he tried to collect Gorman's bounty on me, is back for revenge. And you're gonna make him pay. <laughs> ellipses sure <laughs> so yeah that it, it's pretty weird stuff but yeah he's fighting crossbones in he's like he like pants his crossbones so now crossbones is fighting him in his uh, tidy wife yeah the mask is still on of course of course it's like a weird 50 shades of gray thing you know what i might actually start getting into deadpool because this reminds me i didn't you know, one thing about Deadpool is he kind of reminds me of, like, the old Stan Lee comics. Really? Like, he just, like, I mean, it's a little more R-rated, but, like, constantly making jokes while he's uh -huh. punching people and, like, saying, like, just stupid crap. Well, I, I noticed flipping through that before we started that uh, they really got him, when he's unmasked, a lot more, quote, gruesome than, than what the movie did. Yeah, they do. They do. And I'm surprised they didn't make him more gruesome in the movie, but maybe they didn't want to just make it so bad that people didn't want to look at him when he was unmasked. Yeah, I, I thought I thought about that while I was watching the movie, too. I, I thought that the... Because at first, cause at first when I... With the yeah, makeup. Cause at first when I saw it, it's like, ooh, wow, but no. the, after a while, it's like, you know, it's not as bad as they really could have gone. Well, you know, it's one of those things, maybe like... Maybe like the more gruesome it is, the the more cartoony it is too. Could be like maybe there's like a level where it just hits you. Or, or, yeah, maybe they maybe they didn't want to make it where it was like oh well he's not that bad, but they didn't want to make it to where it was so bad you just yeah. couldn't really 
watch him either. Oh, you'll remember. Uh, you'll remember. He kind of almost reminded me of kind of a like a Freddy Krueger look. Yeah, in, he in, did. In his face. He did. Yeah. Chris, didn't they make reference to that in the movie too? I Weasel. Think so. I think the character Weasel didn't he kind of so yeah something about Freddy Cougar. I think yeah. I do like how they came up with the dead because the name Deadpool has mm-hmm. never made any sense. Like the only thing I can think of is like Death Stroke. Like he's you know stroke stroke like pool like I don't know, but um, I I do like how in the how they made it in the movie the Deadpool like yeah who's betting going to, to die yeah, yeah I thought that was funny I thought that was actually pretty clever <laughs> and they went through different uh, oh what was it uh, uh, they made reference to kind of Daredevil too with one of the things they were trying to figure out what what what, what to call him uh, uh, Dare something or other instead of Deadpool they made no it was Captain Deadpool. Well, there was also a reference, kind of somewhat. Which is really funny. Also, kind of reference to uh, Daredevil because uh, uh, scare, scare something or other. I thought <laughs> I can't remember exactly what he said, but it's I, I took it kind of more of a shot at. at uh, oh, I kind of remember that. You know what I'm saying? I can't remember Damn. the exact line. I'm probably not going to see this one again in theaters, but I am going to get it when it comes out on Blu-ray. Yeah, this is the, the yeah. This that, is a one time at theaters kind of movie he, for me. Like he, I don't need to like repeat it over and over. Star again. Star Wars to me is 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 built for multiple going wanting to go back to the theater to mm-hmm. see it because of it's Star Wars, it's yeah. epic. You want to see it in the theater. Yeah. Deadpool was nice to see in the theater. Yeah, but I want that length kind of. I think what part of what you're thinking is you want that length of time to where when it comes out on home video, when you watch it for the yeah. second time, yeah. it feels fresh again. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, because after a while, you you see that type of movie too often. You already know the jokes, the humor, and it's just kind of like it no longer kind of becomes funny in a yeah. certain sense. You want to you want to watch it to where every time you do watch it, you kind of forget about some of the jokes. In that regard, so. Oh, there's a, uh, a. Also, this banker is holding a, or this bank robber is holding a uh, money bag with a dollar bill <laughs> drawn on it. <laughs> <laughs> that one is, uh, he's looking at another comic right now. That one is, uh, that might be in the future. That's for. Dead Rising, which is a very fun video game. Really, it's like actually one of like it's one of my favorite video games that's come out. It's really, really, it's a zombie video game, but it's really funny. Like this douchebag with the uh, sunglasses, he, um, he's your main character. Well, this guy can be too, but who cares about him? But this guy <laughs> with the sunglasses, he's a fat alcoholic photojournalist. Which I just think is wonderful. So, like, well, knowing yeah. knowing what you've done before and what I'm doing, yeah, no, it, it, I, I think uh, I it, think yeah, I can relate to that character quite a bit. So I, I like him. Oh, there was a thing um, I saw. Uh, uh, the uh, in 2013, the uh, uh, Gary Dugan uh, uh, Deadpool writer uh, was asked one time. Uh, about uh, Deadpool's sexuality. Mm-hmm. I've read this, but yeah, yeah, go for it. yeah. and, and he uh, he said that uh, th- this guy basically confirmed that Deadpool uh, confirming he's a pansexual. Now I don't know exactly what the hell that means, pansexual, but anyway, he says that um, Deadpool is whatever sexual inc- inclination his brain tells him he is in that moment, and then the moment passes. Yeah. yeah. I'm pansexual. not quite sure what pansexual means. Maybe that's, I don't want to know. That's pretty much pansexual okay. right there. Yeah, like, like it's like you can be straight, gay, gay. bi, <laughs> depending on. Like, a lot of people are like, well, what's the difference between pansexual or bisexual? The difference is, like, if you're bisexual, you're bisexual. If you're pansexual, you can be bisexual Tuesday and heterosexual on Thursday and <laughs> homosexual on Friday, like or like in the afternoon. Like it doesn't matter. So whatever you feel like being. So yeah, th- I really like that. I do like the idea of Deadpool as a pansexual. Like that I never, is, that is quite I, wonderful. I never heard the term pansexual until I came across that before. So <laughs> really, yes. <laughs> 
and I kind of thought, okay, is that something they just made up? Or no, it's a real, it's a real thing. It's a, it's a real thing. <laughs> it sounds like someone who just can't make up their mind which way they want to go. Well, that's pretty much it. But yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, pansexual. There was. Never mind. But uh, yeah, I could totally get behind that. I could totally get behind Deadpool as a pansexual. Wink, wink. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, it's just, he's he's really just kind of an interesting character. Like, uh, I'd never really got him before, but, like, and before the movie came out, maybe last year, I was trying to read more about him. He's a really interesting character. I want to play the video game that came out last year. Of course, now that the movie's out, you know, the video game didn't have Ryan Reynolds, so I don't know if it would be any good, but I do want to play it. Uh, did you see the uh, – Ryan Reynolds was on the uh, Late Late Show with James Corden okay. re- recently. Did you see that? Uh-uh. They, uh, they did a little about five-minute skit. You can find it on YouTube if you really want to. Uh, James Corden was, was trying out to be, quote, Deadpool's sidekick, so he did different – little comes in as different things and in the background and i didn't notice it the first time i watched it until i read the comments and and the on the youtube page but there is a a poster of reynolds as green lantern oh nice and then on the poster on green lantern's face there's a bunch of darts that have been thrown on (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good (laughs) you know speaking of green lantern um this is technically, uh, they said, uh, Ryan Reynolds' fifth time uh, doing it some, some some sort of superhero. And the second time, he was Deadpool, by the way. Like yes. We, we, by the way, there was also a, a reference to that in the movie. Did yes. you see the action figure of the crappy Deadpool? Yes. That was yes. pretty. I hated that movie. I thought... I think Wolverine is actually... Wolverine Origins is a much worse movie than Green Lantern. I say, I've never watched Green Lantern I, oh, yeah, we talked about this. I told you, honestly, if, like, to be perfectly honest with you, like, if you watched it on Netflix on a Sunday afternoon or whatever, Cause like, it's... with your wife, you would probably walk away from it like, oh, that movie's not terrible. You'll never want to see it again. But you'd be like, eh, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of terrible. Well, I also found it great during the movie, too, when he's strapped down to the thing and they're sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't uh, make it green. Don't make it green. Or animated. <laughs> um, I want to take it back. You you might think it's terrible, but it's it's nowhere near I, the I, worst. I, You've I, seen really bad movies. I've heard so much about it, and none of it's really good that I was just like, I'm good if I don't see it to a certain extent. I think it's just the most insanely boring movie I've ever seen. Now, like uh, that that is like really the gist of it now, is that it's just boring. Now, going to see Fantastic Four was a little bit of a story because it's like. The trailer made it look one way. Everyone is saying, oh, God, this movie sucked. And it's like, okay, I wanted to go see it just to see what everyone was oh, yeah. talking about to where... That movie was unbelievably bad. That yeah. movie is worse than Wolverine Origins. Is it worse? It's... Okay, is it worse than Green Lantern? Oh, way worse. Way worse. Okay. Uh, Green Lantern's not as... Wolverine Origins is worse than Green Lantern also. <laughs> Green Lantern, I would say... You just have to see it. Like, I've only seen it all the way through once. Um, it is hardly the worst movie I've ever seen. It There is one part at the beginning that is so sappy and dumb that I can't, that it kind of, uh, it's when he has like these flashbacks of his dad dying, it's like so corny. But uh, the rest of the movie, its biggest sin is that it's boring. Really? That's really all it is. How, how, how do you get a boring superhero movie? They I mean, obviously, Fantastic Four is partly that. But Well, and the thing about Green Lantern is, see, they, they looked at it wrong. They made Green Lantern another superhero movie. It's another, oh, like, he, you know, like, it, it takes Spider-Man and Superman and just follows the formula. It, it is the most formulaic thing I've ever seen. Oh, and then he's got a girlfriend, and he's got to go back to Earth. It's like, no, screw that. Like, let's see some space. Uh-huh. This should have been the Star Wars of 
comic book movies. It should have been the Gar- it instead been, of Guardians of the Galaxy. It should have been Guardians of the Galaxy yes. before Guardians of the Galaxy. And to make matters worse, it was sandwiched in between Thor and Captain America, which aside from the fact that both of those movies are leaps and bounds higher in quality, both of those movies also were really embraced the weirdness of the comic books. Uh-huh. Like Thor, you, you've got a bunch of like Norse gods running around on rainbow bridges. Okay. Like, I mean, there's this whole like weird world of like goofy Shakespearean speak that they don't shy away from at all. Uh huh. Like, I mean, that's a big part of the movie. Captain America, he's fighting in world war two against Nazis with laser guns. Which, like, that was actually, the first time I saw it, I was like, that's kind of weird. But then it's like, whatever. Like, you know, they embrace the weirdness right. of the comics. Um, which, before that, if you, as much as I love, you know, Spider-Man was never really too weird in the comics, so I'm not going to count him. But as much as I love X-Men and Nolan's ba- uh, Nolan's Batman movies and um, um, Singer's X-Men movies... Um, you know, they, they played it pretty straight. Like Batman takes place in an ultra realistic world while, uh, singers X-Men movies, the, it's mostly guys with powers and the powers is with superpowers, the p- superpowers represent, um, or, you know, a big metaphor for gay rights, of course, um, or any civil rights, but, but, uh, the thing is, um, you know, in the comics, the X Men they're fighting time traveling robots and gods from thousands of years ago in outer space, going into outer space, traveling through time, going to other dimensions. Batman fights some weird crap too, uh-huh. but they they downplayed all that, and that was fine with them because they made really good movies. And um, but a lot of you know Fantastic Four totally afraid to show Galactus. He's a big cloud. Um, you know, there, and what other movies came out? Like, you you know, they were always afraid to go all the way and Green Lantern was the same. Uh Like you see uh, the planet Oa, you see all this stuff for, but you only see it for like five minutes and then quick, just got to go back to earth. And that is the big problem for me. They they played it straight instead of embracing what Green Lantern is in the comics. Yes. And then just a few months before that. We saw Thor, and Thor was not afraid to show how weird Thor was. Yes. Yeah. And that that was really kind of the first superhero movie that really just embraced the weirdest parts well, of even, the Well, even Captain America. When and he, Captain America did, too. The, the part when he's on stage, you know, Chris Evans is in, in that uh, blue outfit, yeah. whatever, yeah. with the one thing and, and all that, doing the stage thing. Yeah. That was that costume, if you watch the special features on that. That costume that he's wearing, doing all that, is is kind of a nod to what to the original to what the, to what, what he looked like in the forties, you know, when he was in the comics, yeah. and you know, the suit that he's wearing now is more of an updated version of that, yeah. obviously. But that was that was their way of nodding to the original comics of yeah, okay, here you go. But instead of making fighting in it, they just yep. you know they made him on a stage show. So to speak. Yep, <laughs> yeah, and so that that's the big problem with, in my opinion, that's. There's a lot of problems with Green Lantern, but the big problem is that um, I heard Ryan Reynolds talk about it, and he said that um, you know, and you know, is the director, you know, the director who did that, right, was the director who did Goldeneye and Casino Royale. Really? Yeah. How the hell did, did that movie suck so bad then? Uh, well, Ryan Reynolds was talking about it recently. He said that like there really wasn't a script. He said that they, uh, the studio had pushed they had been um or was the studio interfering too much the, it it sounded like the studio kept uh um kept deny or declining any scripts that were coming in which is fine and then all of a sudden they realized they wanted to make that movie within the year so they, they rushed it they rushed it like there wasn't a script ready so like he said that there was a team of screenwriters that did their best basically cramming together what they could and what little time they could. So that's really what happened. There's no script and they're trying to, but it's really not a very good movie. Um, 
Well, like I said, it's it's not as bad as Wolverine Origins. Certainly not as bad as Catwoman or Fantastic Four. Well, the problem with Fantastic Four was it wasn't the fact that it was boring. Is is the well, waste, that is just beyond waste of waste of the characters themselves. Waste of everything, especially Doctor Doom. Yeah. Well, and, and, I mean, they wasted a really, really really good villain that they could have taken, as we said before. Really big You're advantage being of way too nice to that movie, by the way. You're making that movie sound like it was a competently made movie. Uh, the first uh, you're hour, making it sound the, like the, it was a bad yet competently made movie. The, the this first movie hour was like the a first piece hour maybe the first hour may be competently possibly, but after yeah, that but it, it goes it downhill. Falls apart. I mean this this movie really was like I've rare I ha, you don't see movies like this too often anymore where it. Looks like it's made with absolutely no skill, like just mm-hmm. cobbled together, just an absolute mess. I, like I, you don't really see very many movies like and, that. And anymore. I'm guessing the only reason why Ryan Reynolds went with Deadpool because he's basically was the one behind it, pushing to get it done. Yeah, because he had his vision, and and my guess he had a lot to do with with a lot of this. So oh, yeah. otherwise, yeah. I think he would have stayed away from it because I think I think Green Lantern has, I think I think soured him. On the comic books, to a certain extent, not necessarily ov- overall in general, but I'm just saying it. He kind of got associated with bad comic book movies, and and it. Well, you know, Blade Trinity, uh, uh, Wolverine Origins as Deadpool number one, yeah, Green Lantern. There's a fourth one in there that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't remember what the. What what the all are? Uh, I, I, but yeah, I, this I, is his fifth time. time. I guess the fifth time is a charm. Yeah, and you he, know? he said he said besides possibly doing more Deadpool movies, he said this is the last time he'll do a comic book character. Yeah, other than Deadpool. Well, so. I mean, it's it's it stunted his career because again, it's like like I said earlier on your show, it's like I and I think a lot of people forgot. We were reminded when we saw these commercials, like. I'd forgotten how funny Ryan Reynolds was. Uh-huh. Like as Van Wilder, like that movie's hilarious. <laughs> and I I'd forgotten that because for the past almost a decade he'd just been making bad superhero movies and uh-huh. then it kind of disappeared for a while. Well, it's kind of like Ben Affleck hit a stretch there for a while <coughs> with uh well when he did Daredevil and stuff, you know, he had a stretch of movies he was putting out weren't that no, great Geely? <laughs> you know the movies he was I've acting, seen Geely, you know, by the way. you know the movies he was acting in weren't ever great but the movie the movies he was directing were tremendous yeah and yeah. it's like okay why can't you find these roles that you're acting in and and it took him a little bit to for people to kind of for him to kind of start Geely looking is at another him. one of those movies that's like there's no way to call it a competently made movie like <laughs> Geely is like it's like, it, it's pretty bad. It's really bad. One of these days we need to do a, a, a podcast, whether it's your show or my show, where we talk about the incompetent, bad comic book movies because there's plenty out there to talk we about. We really do. Like, I mean, there's... There's there's the last two Batmans from, from, from the original Batman series. I would, you know what, I, I, I would go a little easier uh, and say only... The only one that's completely incompetently made is four. Three is just a bad movie. It's a cynical movie, but there's still some level of professionalism in it. Right. Uh, Batman and Robin is right. unwatchable. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say that one. Superman four: The Quest for Peace is bad. Is yes. worse. Is that I one's mean, actually? So you could talk about Batman, Robin, Superman, uh, Quest for Peace, the Fantastic Four, Catwoman, I mean, Catwoman, yeah. Supergirl. Oh God! How yes. the duck? Uh, <laughs> I've seen most of these, and I I couldn't finish Howard the Duck. I got about fifteen minutes into it. I was like, "This is god awful." Um, the spirit is really really bad. Have you ever seen that? The spirit. The spirit. It was directed by um, by um, oh my gosh, Dare, Daredevil Daredevil. Uh, he wrote Daredevil in the seventies. Uh, he did Batman, Dark Knight Returns. Frank Miller. Ah, it was directed by Frank Miller. Really? He was riding off the high of Sin City, you know. And of course, ah, Sin okay, City okay, was okay. Sin City was not directed by Frank Miller. It was directed by um, Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez. Uh huh. 
Well, he directed Spirit, and Spirit is an old comic strip from the 30s and 40s. Uh-huh. Um, he directed Spirit and in the same style as, um, you know, that weird black and white style as Sin City. Well, it is, like, so incredibly dumb. Like, it, it's like... Just to let you in on, like, it's got Scarlett Johansson and uh, Samuel L. Jackson are the bad guys, which is really funny (laughs) because the next year they show up in Iron Man 2, and I'm sure they're like, what movie are we in now? (laughs) But so Samuel L. Jackson is dressed up as a Nazi giving a speech in uh, uh, in front of a portrait of Adolf Hitler, and it's like... What is going on? Here? Like, like, do you not understand how this imagery makes no sense? <laughs> like, there's just something here that just doesn't work. But like, and then there's like these. He keeps making these clones of these little fat bald guys that <laughs> were. Th- oh my gosh! And they're like, they're supposed to be funny, but they're not funny, and it, it's just it's horrible. And then of course. uh uh, what's her name? Eva Mendez plays a character named Sans Serif. And it's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> like, it, it is so, like, I'm, it, like, it's almost so bad it's good. Like, because you do laugh a lot out of it, but it's, it's pretty bad. Ghost Rider was also pretty bad. I thought, I found the first one better than the second one. I didn't see the second one. I did see the first one. Ghost Rider, I would still say, was a competently made movie, but it's pushing it. <laughs> well, Ghost Rider, I'd much rather watch Ghost Rider, the first Ghost Rider again, than I would Fantastic Horror. The new one? Yeah. The new fan- Really? I'd rather watch Ghost I, Rider than the, the I new I think fan- I would rather watch just about any of these than the new Fantastic Four. So. Uh, except for maybe Superman 4. Even Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, at least it's like, well, it's got Christopher Reeve. It got Christopher Reeve and it got Gene Hackman. <laughs> like, That's the only redeeming qualities even in that movie. Yeah. And I don't, still don't even know why those two even... How they can even... My friend and I have, in that have movie. this game where we play. It's like, if you can name ten good things about a movie then it's not a terrible movie and there's a lot of bad movies where it's like well i can name 10 good things superman for the quest for peace we couldn't name anything we were like should we count the fact that christopher reeve and jimmy hackman came back i'm like i think that's cheating no that one got a zero Uh uh-huh a zero that's a bad movie (laughs) um yeah catwoman was terrible I i will say hollywood is has has uh Given more respect to the comic book oh, they have. They have. A, a lot, and and I think the fact, beginning with Nolan's Batman's, and then and of course, even well, starting with Spider-Man, Spider-Man, I would say, but as as the years Nolan's have gone, Batman on, kept, kept going, kept it going, yeah. and then Marvel's success with the cinematic universe mm-hmm. has really helped, because with almost seems like with each movie, they kind of. Yeah, they kind of raised a bar. Oh, a they bit. do. They really do. Yeah, and and I'm sure Civil War is going to be the same way. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing. It's like the fact that Fantastic Four was as terrible as it was, was really a wake up call. It's like, this it, could, this could happen still. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I'd kind of like the last really bad, I'm not going to count the spirit cause that one was not mainstream to begin with, but the last really bad superhero movie was probably Wolverine Origins and even that one was nowhere near as bad as Fantastic Four. Yeah. And I don't even know if I want to count Wolverine Origins. Maybe the last one, the last one that was this level of bad was probably um, Catwoman. Oh, yeah. The Halle Berry. Ooh, ooh, that's bad. That's a bad movie. I, I, it's very similar to this one. No, it's not. I mean, I mean, I don't know. That one's almost more competently I, made than this one, though. I mean, I, I never. I, Okay, they, the fact that they made the Catwoman movie is one thing, but I, I didn't really know. I mean, to me, if you take Catwoman out of the Batman realm, is there really enough there for a standalone movie? See, again, e- your argument is being way too nice to this movie. Because like, this movie was, like, so bad. It was directed by some French guy, who, and the whole movie feels like one, like, really, 
bad music video from the from the year 2002 really like it that's like what it feels like and like because everything is just off because because you know there's there's certain there's certain characters that with other characters in a movie they work well but you take them out of that particular element no does it really work that's that's like that's well you know the story behind this the the script for catwoman was originally written uh after tim burton's batman returns it was supposed to be a spin-off sequel to that but it just got pushed around pushed 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 back for 10 years yeah and then they finally did it with this because to me to me catwoman out of the batman universe is like like oh and oh well you know Batman and Robin would have been successful and then trying to make a Robin movie by himself as still being Robin and, and, and you lose that dynamic because he's not with Batman. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, you're just, it's something about it it's just ain't going to feel right. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to read a little bit of mail in here. We're just going to go over some. Of ah, these. that's fine. That's fine. But, uh, now I, I should let you know the, the mail in these modern ones, and by modern I'd say in the past twenty years, they're they're nowhere near as fun as the mail from the sixties and seventies or even early eighties, but here we go. So this one is Dear Deadpool. And the page has a little that little cartoon picture of Deadpool again saying Write into us at officex at Marvel dot com. Don't forget to mark Okay to print. Oh, well, that wasn't very funny, but here we go. Uh, Dear Deadpool, two years ago, I bought a Deadpool comic and laughed my head off. I have been hooked ever since, but my question is, if you could make your own comic, what would it be called? Hunter Ramsey. P.S. Other than Preston, who's your best friend? Hunter, quit bragging that you can remember things you did two years ago. I can't even remember things I did two minutes ago. Deadpool. P.S. My best friend? I have one. He's a super cool guy. You don't know him. Oh my god, this is awesome. Uh, they're, they're writing back as Deadpool. <laughs> so here, you read the second one. <laughs> this is actually... Re- I'm glad I found this. Uh, uh, you talk about that one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, dear, dear Deadpool, I'm not entirely sure what is going on in your comic series at the moment since I have to use a, a library to read it. But I did enjoy your war against the dead presidents. Your tenure as a soul hunter was pretty amazing too. But do you know what would be marvelous? A team-up of Spider-Man, not the one in the New York. No, I mean Spider-Man in Japan with the giant robot. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Imagine all the action you could you could partake in. In, in with a giant robot. Uh, yeah, whatever his name is. P.S. My friend told me it was a bad idea to write this, mainly because you might read it. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a story I have to use a library to do a lot of things. Uh, wash my underwear, being just one of them. I only know... One Spider-Man, something seems off about him lately, like he was a a Lady Shield agent inside the inside him, but different. Deadpool. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are really good, actually. I'm glad I found them. Uh, let's see. Deadpool. No letters section. Come on, you pansy. First you upper deck my toilet, then you let yourself look like a movie on Lifetime in front of Captain America and that hairy dwarf Wolverine, no less. Okay, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist kicking the man while he's down. Still, he upper deckered my toilet. In all seriousness, this current run has been some of the best Deadpool in a long darn time. Please keep up the great work. That's from... Roz Griswold from Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> Roz, I upper deckered your toilet. If oh, excuse me, Roz, if I upper deckered your toilet, you'd know. Thanks for reading books. This book, DP. <laughs> I'll read, let me read the next one too. Dear Deadpool, I love your comics. I have not read all of your comics, but I already love them. I have most everything Deadpool. I have a Deadpool sweatshirt, a Deadpool keychain, a Deadpool beanie, and a Deadpool sweatshirt. 
You're awesome, man. I don't get why you're not in the Avengers. Captain America sucks. <laughs> All he does is throw his shield and and is a little strong, but he's the leader. Are you kidding me? At least make Tony the leader. He's smart. But anyway, you're awesome. Just thought you needed to know that. Have a nice day. Your fan, Zach. And I have not read your letter, but I already love it. You have a nice <laughs> life, and don't tell me what to do, fan pool. Is <laughs> yours? Uh, hey, Deadpool, my man. Love what you told. Love what you did to Crossbones. Anyways, uh, I was thinking. I noticed a lot of female fans on your letter section. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, on your letter section. I was just wondering, would you mind terribly forgetting the privacy policy thingy and just you, you know give me the some email addresses? Maybe even use your. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Crap. I need to go get my glasses checked again. Uh, give me uh, let's see untarnished reputation at Shield to find some oh I don't know phone numbers, home addresses, postcards, oh photographs. I'm sorry. And before you say it, yeah, yes, I know it would be illegal, but some, but since when does the amazing Wade Wilson care about the law? Hook a brother up. Would you dig? Until next time. Uh, Adrian Poole B. Uh, next best thing, I will send you a bottle of Essence of Wade. Use it responsibly. <laughs> Gift pool. <laughs> Gift pool. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Deadpool. Oh, wait. Hold on. Sorry. Dear Deadpool, I was just wondering if you could pass a message on to Agent Preston. Can you please let her know that I simply adore her? And her presence in your current series has definitely made this run my absolute favorite. I'd love, I'd, I've i loved your comics for a really long time. But sometimes they could feel a little bit like a boys club in a way that often only female characters, the only female characters were one-dimensional and skim, skimpily clad. Agent Preston totally solves this problem for me in the current run. She's a normal-looking, well-rounded character, and I think the way she's acting as your conscience is making you a more interesting character, too. No offense. Can you ask her if she can hang around after she finally gets expelled from your brain? Alyssa. <laughs> I don't know what you've got against Boys Club. It was just a safe alternative play, play place for troubled youths like myself. Imagine what sort of person I'd be without a structure in my life. In that respect, Preston is sort of like the boys club too, but not calling her well-rounded. But not cool calling her well-rounded. She knows a fat joke when she hears it. <laughs> club pool. <laughs> club pool. Let's see. I'm going to read this next one. It's pretty long. Okay. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Holy crap. I couldn't even wait to come home to write after I finished it. I still, I'm still at work. I haven't read a Deadpool story that great and well, possibly ever. It's truly incredible to see what a generally comical character can do in the right hands. Now a writer can hit readers with emotion like, like a left hook from the Hulk. It's been a while since I was as genuinely impressed with a story arc in any sense as I was with this last one, and I'm sure a lot of other readers feel the same way. The knockoff X-Men were a fantastic idea, which really has potential for exploring where they go from there, either popping up, either popping back up in a limited series. And it was a struggle not to tear up with that last panel between Cap and Deadpool. But the writing of Deadpool is what got me. I can't even put my finger on it. The reader the reader was just completely drawn in by him and what Deadpool must have been feeling by the second book of the arc. And playing him off as Cap and Wolverine like that was brilliant. You know, something big is going on when those two are concerned about someone. As a, as a side note, I tire of Wolverine's overexposure 
as much as the next guy. But I would read the hell out of an ongoing series featuring those three by these writers. Deadpool had purpose again. He wasn't just wandering in and out of adventures, which, while generally amusing, was kind of getting old. Deadpool had dimension brought back to him, and it was almost a complete surprise to see it, much less to see it done so amazingly well. The art was fantastically fitting, capturing what was what was happening behind the masks with the masks still on beautifully. This has been a fantastic arc. I could lend out to any comic naysayer and go, Really? You think you wouldn't like comics? Read this. Throwing it up there with my personal favorites like Craven's Last Hunt and The Return of the Rhino in Amazing Spider-Man from a couple years back. So thank you. Thank you so much for this arc and this series, and I hope, hope, hope this is one of Marvel's ongoing series that actually, you know, on goes. That's from John Rayworth. I am expecting a follow-up letter from John saying that his work had had a filter looking out for any mention of me and that he was fired for fanboying on the job. Only Marvel editors are allowed to do that. Dead serious. <laughs> All right. And then we got a couple more down at the bottom. <coughs> Dear Deadpool, you grind up chimichangas into pancake batter and put chimichanga pancake on a taco shell is thor's hair soft will you ever see madcap again your fan daryl p.s thor's hair is soft it's like a dog or a teddy bear uh gladly naturally whole and hopefully awesome pull p.s it feels exactly like the like the trim on a on a Brand new pair of Uggs. <laughs> that was awesome. <coughs> Next issue. Time traveling Hitler. <laughs> Sweet. This was really fun. I really liked this one. <laughs> well, I think, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add about Deadpool or shenanigans or anything? Anything at all. It could be about tacos or whatever. Ooh. Not off the top of my head. All right. Well, I would like to agree with Deadpool. I also think tacos are number one. And with that note, we're going to be sending off. Um, probably the next one might have to do with Batman or Superman. Might have to go into the DC realm for a little bit. It's been a while since I've done the DC realm. Yeah, and considering there's that small movie coming out in March, which is the next big superhero movie coming out. Mm, I don't know. Something about justice. I, I don't know. Mm. Problem is, will DC do the movie justice? Oh, wow. Ooh. That was really good. Man. <laughs> wow. How, yeah. Well, we're, and that's, that's, that's some good journalism right there. Yeah. That's some, that's a good quip. Well, anyway, everybody. Well, you know, a, I, I, okay. I get, I get paid, you know, quid pro quo. That's true. <laughs> you kidding. sure do. 